let's just sew whatever what is up you guys welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the Victoria wristlet um, I have two different versions of this video this video is for the more structured wallet version of the pattern Ben what do you want you want to see it stop stop it okay sorry um, so in this one I used vinyl. I don't know that I would recommend using vinyl if you're going to use waterproof canvas. It was very bulky, but it turned out really cute. Um, so there's the front. We've got our snaps in place. This part does fit a foam. Um, and I just thought about it. I know I have this in the pattern now, but you could add two D-rings and make this a cute little crossbody bag. It would be perfect. We added a zipper to the outer pocket to the outside. I filmed so many videos today and I don't know how to talk anymore, clearly. Oh, inside we added card slots. Thank you to Laura who helped me figure out the card slots. And then we added a zipper pocket inside as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little um, dicey as far as the card slots go because I had to use a different sewing machine, but we made it work. So be sure to give it a thumbs up, download the pattern, and enjoy and get started on making the more involved Victoria wristlet. Um, I also have a video for a simpler version, so be sure to check that out. We're gonna get started by prepping our zipper. Okay, so I've got this zipper by the yard and I'm going to start with a nine inch zipper. I've already added my zipper pull and then I have my two zipper tabs here. So these are two inches which is perfect because we don't need to really worry about which way is which. So we're just going to start by folding it in half and then folding in our centers. And then I'm going to clip it to hold it. Again, fold in half. Fold in the centers and you can use your fingers to press that or you can use um, an iron, works great too. Uh, these are going to be a little bit long so I'm going to start with one edge up against the edge of the zipper and then we'll have excess to cut. And this just kind of helps in case you mess up for one and then, um, oh well speaking of messing up, and then if um, your zipper width varies then it's not too long it's not too short you can cut it to what you need um, if you use the same size zipper every time you could go ahead and kind of note how wide you need it in case you don't want any waste Hey, good thing my zipper pull is longer, or my zipper tab is longer than it needs to be. Okay, and then we're just going to put our other zipper tab on the end of this one. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, if you'd like to, you can top stitch along the folded end of your zipper tab too, but it's definitely not necessary. So now I'll just go ahead and trim off my excess. So that's what I'm doing off camera. I'm just using my scissors along the excess. And now our zipper should be um, about nine inches. Mine is just a little bit over. It's like eight and a quarter, but that's okay. Or nine and a quarter, I mean. So we will set this aside for now. And that's done. So now we're going to make our D-ring connector. So I've got my one inch by three inch piece of vinyl. If you wanted to, you could add a half inch piece of non-woven interfacing just to stabilize it a little more. But I think it'll be just fine. I'm going to fold 
the raw ends in towards the center. And we're gonna top stitch along the raw, or the long edges, I mean. That is top stitched and now we're gonna furiously search for our little d-ring where has mine run to oh there it is <laughs> um, so take our half inch d-ring with the wrong side facing up string that through your d-ring and then you can do a little base stitch if you want I'm just gonna kind of clip it in place and move along we're gonna make our wristlet strap um, so we're going to fold this in half. And then fold the short end or the long sides in. This is easier with a, an iron, I should say. And then for one of the two inch sides, we're actually gonna fold that under about half an inch so that there is no raw edge when we make the strap. But I'm gonna quickly iron this. I always find that using a nice amount of steam really helps keep everything in place. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and fold this in half to make our wristlet strap. You can start on any end you would like. down one end, make your way to the other end, and across the bottom. Oops. If you have another way you like to make your wristlet strap, feel free to follow those directions. Either way, it's all good. And then I'm going to take my wristlet strap, I'm going to take the finished end through my half inch snap hook. I'm going to tuck the raw end underneath that finished end and you can either add a rivet here or you can sew through it. I'm just going to do a little box stitch, shorten my stitch length, um, or you could just do um, a back and forth stitcher stitch. Sometimes I like to do a little plus sign. and forth and that will help as well so cute so I just did a little plus sign and that is your wristlet strap so we'll set that aside we're making ourselves a nice little pile um, so now we're going to add our magnetic snaps um, to the lining and the exterior. If your sewing machine foot is really wide, you might find it easier to attach the snaps to the lining panel after. Totally up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach my snaps. The lining side is going to get the male snaps and the exterior is going to get the female snaps. I have gone ahead and added a little bit of Decoville light or just any non-woven interfacing to the back. Whoa. Guess not well enough. Through. 
If you have slim snaps, those will work well for this as well. Those, there's like ultra slim. Okay, and then we're going to grab our exterior pattern piece one, which I've already marked out. As well as added deck of the light in the proper places. So I'll go ahead and mark where these go. And I'll very carefully poke those holes. I am using vinyl for the exterior of most of this wristlet, so I haven't added much interfacing. And I'll be using waterproof canvas to line it, so again, not much interfacing will be added. Um, in the simple video, I go over how I interface it, but that's also the same way the instructions say to interface it, so take your pick. So I'm just going to do a quick little test. Yep, our snaps line up. That is a good sign. So now that our snaps are in place, we're going to make the V-shaped outer pocket. So pattern piece three will be laid on top of the exterior pattern piece two. So that's our accent piece over top, and we're going to so along the bottom and then baste it all in place as well using a stitch length of 4.5 you can kind of use whatever works for you and pivot at those corners And then we're going to top stitch and baste in place. So now we can take our lining that has the snaps. Again, if you feel like your machine is gonna to get too close to these snaps, just add them later. But we should be good. And we're gonna clip that all in place and then use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so just really close to the top. excess and you want to cut it pretty close but you definitely don't want to cut through your existing stitch -ing, stitching and then clip clip into that center so now we're gonna turn it to top stitch. And then after top stitching, if you aren't adding the snaps, that's when you would wanna follow the directions to add the snaps. But please mark those before you sew it together, otherwise your, your markings aren't gonna be correct. So, yeah. 
And I'm just kind of rolling that seam in between my fingers. And now we're gonna top stitch. So if you haven't added your snaps, this is when you would want to do it. But if you have added your snaps, you can go ahead and baste, baste all of those pieces together. Okay. And I'm going to trim my sides just because I have that excess interfacing. And I'd rather have it on my floor than on my pattern piece. I don't know. Okay, so there's that. So now we can put that on our main panel pattern piece, one with the snaps. Ooh, it's so satisfying when it clips in place. Sorry, I'm a weirdo. So I'm just clipping it all together. We're going to base this on. And then we're going to grab the D-ring that we set aside. And we're going to place it along this six and a half inch side, two inches from the top. half of it in the seam allowance. Sorry, I'm also making notes to change onto the pattern. So don't mind that. All right, now we're gonna baste. about half an inch within the seam allowance of that D-ring connector. Okay, so there is the exterior finished. Well, that exterior. I'm also going to add a pocket to the exterior just for funsies to see how it goes. There's my lining pieces. So we're gonna add a pocket inside and then I'm gonna show you guys how to add the card slots. So let's go ahead and fold one of our lining pieces in half and then I'll grab one of the pocket pieces in half. Okay, so lay pocket piece four on top of the lining man panel piece, one inch from the top. Okay, looking good. And then one and a half inches from the top of that. That might be a little low. One inch from the top of that. We're gonna make a six inch wide by half inch tall box. just so happens to be this itty bitty baby ruler. Okay. And then we're gonna sew along that box. Oh, 
open. You can use this as a way to birth your wristlet as well. I am just gonna go ahead and close it up just because I think it'll be easier to birth through the bottom of the lining. So that is totally up to you, personal preference. We're gonna turn this right side out. And then all I'm doing off screen is pressing my lining. zippers. I like, I like to make mine quite a bit longer than the box I need just so that the ends trail off into the seam allowance. So I'll center that over it and you can choose to leave this as an open compartment or you can go ahead and add a zipper. Straighten up my zipper. of this zipper. What are, what are you playing with, Ben? You weirdo. And then we're gonna just sew around the entire thing. All four sides. steps on the exterior. This is my first time adding one to the exterior, so let's all just pray that it works out. I think it'll be so cute. Then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, but I know that it's an inch down from the top of there and an inch down from the top of there. mark out your six inch by half inch box. And then you definitely wanna make sure that it's straight If it's not, people will notice.
easy. Okay, and then we're gonna cut that open. Luckily, this is a fairly thin vinyl. I mean, it's not like the thinnest, but this should work pretty well. We definitely can't iron this vinyl, so be sure to keep that in mind. good finger pressing and then if you need to you could use double-sided tape to keep the lining in place but it looks like we're okay Ben so I'm gonna go ahead and clip this from the inside just for now to hold it all in place That looks interesting. Looks like a monster with scary teeth. Um, then I'm just gonna cut my zipper, my last zipper. We'll go ahead and lay that inside. Benjamin. You're kind of uh, in the middle of my project right now. outer pocket. Now I just need to add that fabric to the other side. I think this will work out quite well. What do you think, Ben? How are we doing? You're going to need to get your tail out of here. There you go. Lay there. So now I can sew around the top, bottom, and sides. You could even make this pocket shorter if you wanted to so that maybe it only fits change. You don't have to dig around too far inside. I think I might do that. I might shorten it a few inches. Well, not that many. There we go. We'll shorten it like an inch. Now I'll trim off my excess fabric from the pocket. Okay. So now we've got our two zipper pockets finished. We've got our exterior done and our exterior zipper ready to go. So I'll go ahead and grab the last section of my lining, which is going to get the card slots. So I'm gonna insert footage of me making the card slots here, and then we'll get to top stitching. All right, 
you guys. So we are going to mark out the card slots for the Victoria wristlet. And we're gonna follow along the instructions on page four to uh, mark out the card slots. Um, this is not required for this pattern, but it is kind of a fun way to turn this pattern into more of a wallet than just a wristlet. So let's go ahead and get started on marking. I did not add any interfacing to this piece nor am I using waterproof canvas because I want it to be able to turn. Um, you could add some Decaville light, not Decaville light, do not add Decaville light to this piece. Um, you could add 809, which is what I usually use in card slots. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this lined up on our cutting mat. I've got my ruler here. I'm gonna set this to two and a half. I'm gonna make a line. And now this is A, and then we're gonna measure two inches up from that. And this is going to be B. And then 2.25 from that. And that's C. And then another two inches. And then 2.25. And then you can kind of like make a little check mark as you go. Um, I know I start to get a little confused, but marking the letters also helps. F is two. And then 2.25 is G. G. Okay, so now we're gonna fold on line A with wrong sides together. So if you pressed kind of hard enough with your pen, it should have made a bit of a crease. Okay, so there's line A. And then we're gonna flip this over with right sides together. We'll fold on line B. Just kind of crease it as you go wrong sides together on line C. So we're gonna flip this over. And just kind of go back and forth. So line D should be right sides together, line E wrong sides together. And then last one. Okay, and then I lied. In line F. So G. Is the last part. So we'll have one, two, three, six card slots. Perfect. So now you can go ahead and top stitch these if you would like. Um, I'll have to use my domestic sewing machine because um, my industrial definitely won't make it through all these layers. So I'm just going to add a top stitch to each of these and um, we can kind of leave this as is for now. And we will get started on the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip those. I just kind of readjusted those as I saw fit. Um, you can kind of adjust your folds as needed as well. But once we top stitch everything, this is gonna get folded over. We're gonna stitch around the top and leave the bottom open. We'll turn it right side through and then you'll have card slots as well as a little pocket. All right, sorry for this strange angle. I just finished top stitching my card slots and I've kind of straightened them up a little bit. So now I'm gonna turn them wrong side up very carefully. And we're gonna lay this over the card slots, kind of centered along that panel. 
Make sure the bumpy side is down. And now I'm gonna fuse that. Which is cool because that'll help keep that all in place. So now we're ready to fold this over and sew it together. Okay, so now that my cat has joined us, <laughs> now that our card slots are all folded and our interfacing is nice and fused. Oh, hello, Benjamin, too. Okay, anyway, uh, we're going to sew using a quarter inch seam allowance, so just right along the edge. Back stitch. And then pivot at the corners and you're basically just following along the interfacing you can see it's fused all the way up to the top here and then we're gonna leave an opening which is why I have my clips here like that back stitch the top I'll do another little back stitch okay. and now we're going to clip the corners you can trim the seam allowance up if you need to but it's not too thick so it should be okay and then we're gonna turn it through this little hole in the bottom so now that I've got it all turned out and pressed we're gonna top stitch along the top of this piece just an eighth of an inch from the edge at the end and now I'm going to use a very scientific method of just folding it in half to find the center <laughs> okay wow look at that okay oh no I don't trust that I'm gonna fold it the other way there we go there we go some more exact. You could also use a ruler, guys. I'm just doing this one-handed, so there we go. And then you can start at the very, very top, or you can start at the third line. One, two, three. yeah, the second from the top line, either way. And then add a couple back stitches at each row. Keep in mind that you know, you take card slots in and out all the time, so you want it to be nice and sturdy. And then when we get to the bottom, we'll finish our back stitch. And now we're ready to add the card slot to our lining panel. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that view. Now we're going to attach the card slots. How high up should we put them? Maybe an inch and a half from the Okay. So we're gonna fold this in half. And we will then fold this in half, but we kind of already did, so we're just gonna leave that as is. And we're gonna measure an inch and a half from the top. We did it. And we're going to stitch around the outside edge about an eighth of an inch. And I like to backstitch quite a bit. Yeah, Ben, right about there. Oh my God. Oh, I thought he was turning the fabric. I was about to freak out. Oh, he's just getting the thread. Oh, okay, bye. And then we're gonna top stitch along the bottom. And the sides. I can't say that I would recommend making these card slots with waterproof canvas, but if you wanted to, you could definitely use uh, some 809 to stabilize them. I just used regular cotton canvas and one piece of um, interfacing. So we've got card slots here. 
a total of six. Hey -o. And then you've got a little section here where you can put money or receipts or something like that. And then if you feel like it's a little too loose, you could even add another side stitching of um, to secure your card slots, but I would rather be a little loose than too tight, especially in something like this. Okay, so now we are ready to add our top zipper. So I'm gonna lay it across the piece with the snap pocket accent. We're gonna lay it face down, center it over, you know, everything. We're gonna grab one of our lining panels. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the side with the zipper just because I'd like the zippers to be on opposite sides. We're gonna make sure it's facing up. Clip that all in place. And we're gonna sew that together with a half inch seam allowance. Watch out for that zipper pull, not half inch, a quarter of an inch seam allowance, sorry. Watch out for that zipper pull, make sure everything is sitting together nicely. And now, we're going to leave our lining facing up and bring the exterior facing down and sew through only the exterior. And then you can use um, your iron or your fingers to press the lining down. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat those steps with the other exterior. So just go ahead and center your zipper. Clip in place and if you need to, you can baste your zipper on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that just because I have a lot of layers. So just use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And this will help your zipper from getting too wonky. Just because when there's so many layers to keep track of, it gets confusing. So there's that. And then we'll go ahead and clip on the last lining piece. Ben, do you have my wristlet strap under you? Can I, can I have all that back? You're crumpling in my papers, man. Don't act like I offended you. Okay, after I've yelled at my cat. Oh, flip this over so we can see our stitch line. And then come in about a quarter of an inch. Watch out for that zipper pull. We don't wanna sew through it. Break a needle. And then we're going to open up our exterior only so all of our linings are pointing in the same direction and we're only top stitching through the exterior. Beautiful. So now we can unzip our zipper halfway. I like to do all of them just because these long zipper pulls, you never know. Something could happen. And we're going to turn our zipper teeth into the lining. Same with that, the zipper tabs, point them facing into the lining and add a clip along the exterior. Make sure your um, D-ring is pointing in. You don't wanna accidentally catch that or anything. So pointing in, clip, clip, clip. 
clip our linings together and our exteriors together. And you'll notice because we didn't top stitch through the lining, it's sitting really nice and flat. Okay. All right, so we're gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna use a slightly wider seam allowance on the lining, just because that's how I do. And then you can kind of feel where your zipper tabs are and you don't want to sew through them. You just want to sew right next to them. If it gets a little bulky, you can kind of lift your foot up and back down, kind of crank through it. I don't usually use interfacing on my zipper tabs, so that's my problem at the moment. There we go. Again, make sure that your D-ring is pointing in. You do not want to sew through that. And then just kind of line it up with your zipper tabs. And then increase your seam allowance just a little bit. inch opening and we're going to trim our excess seam allowance. I don't trim my D-ring attachment just because you want to give yourself a little extra security. So now we are going to birth it. Make sure your zipper is all the way unzipped at this point. If you're wanting to square the bottom of this wristlet, this is the point where you'd want to do it. Um, I don't know that I would go any more than half an inch uh, squared. So cut out half an inch and then sew it together. Poke out all those corners. Gently. And then you really want to make sure that you poke out those zipper tabs as well. So just give it a nice press. And you want to make sure that you haven't sewn through them. Otherwise, you're adding way too much bulk. Oh. There we go. And then push out the corners of your lining. And 
And then we can stick the lining into our wristlet. Push those corners into the corners of the wristlet. using all waterproof canvas really bulked this up so I don't know if I would do that again it's not too bad though push your pocket down oh there we go that's my main problem my lining pocket wasn't pushed all the way down there we go that's so much better zip that back up make sure this is pushed down nicely it certainly is make sure our Zipper tab is pushed out. Got a little stray thread here. And then the zipper tab on this side, yeah. And then add your snap tab and you are finished. So right here is where you can add a phone if you wish. You can add some stuff into this pocket. You can open it up and add some doll hairs. Throw in some cards. And you know, got a pocket here as well. Lots of different storage options, lots of ways to make this wristlet unique um, and just, you know, have fun with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see the wristlets that you guys make and I will see you next time.